With the Yankees underperforming again, I think it's worth asking the question. And it's a question we almost hate to ask because to a lot of fans, he's been a part of the team for their entire life. But after 20 years, it's time for a reckoning. Is Brian Cashman actually a good general manager? George Steinbrenner was known for constantly changing personnel. Managers, general managers, players. Hell, the guy couldn't sit still. His opinion was that losing was unacceptable, and that resonated with a lot of fans. That if somebody wasn't performing, that they needed a bit of tough love, or they just needed to get the hell out. At one point, Hideki Arabu was considered his prize acquisition, and then a couple years later, he called him a fat, pussy toad. George Steinbrenner once met a man named John Cashman, Brian's father, in Pompano Beach, Florida, and the two became friends. Through another family friend, John helped Brian obtain a position with the Yankees organization in 1986 as an intern. He worked in the Yankees minor league scouting department in the day and worked as a security guard at night. I'll tell you what, not many people can be as imposing a figure as Brian Cashman. After Cashman graduated, the Yankees offered him a position as a baseball operations assistant and he accepted. Steinbrenner was then banned from baseball in July of 1990 for hiring a gambler to investigate Dave Winfield. Gene Michael, then the Yankees general manager, took over the daily operations for the Yankees and Cashman played a small role in assisting him. He was promoted to assistant farm director in 1990 and to major league administrator in 1991. Michael named Cashman an assistant general manager in 1992, and he remained in the role after Bob Watson succeeded Gene Michael as general manager in 1995. The Yankees won the 1996 World Series. In February of 1998, Bob Watson resigned from the Yankees, and Brian Cashman was named senior vice president and general manager. He had come all the way up from an intern level to be the general manager of the biggest franchise in the world. He agreed to a one-year contract for $300,000 and became the second youngest general manager in Major League Baseball history and the youngest ever with the Yankees. The Yankees had a magical season. They won 114 games and won the 1998 World Series title. In 1999, Cashman made a major trade trading fan favorite David Wells coming off of a perfect game in an 18-4 season to the Toronto Blue Jays to acquire Roger Clemens, who had won the previous two Cy Young Awards. The next year, he acquired David Justice, who won the ALCS MVP award for his play in the 2000 ALCS against the Mariners. The Yankees won the 98, 99, and 2000 World Series, making Brian Cashman the first general manager ever to win World Series titles in his first three years. But that's where the story gets interesting. In 2001, the Yankees lost in Game 7 of the World Series to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And after that season, the team's key players began to depart. Paul O'Neill retired. Tino Martinez left in free agency. Scott Brocious retired. The team was just beginning to take on a different shape, and it was up to Brian Cashman to build the next dynasty. And it's a dynasty we are still waiting for, 20 years later. In 2004, he traded Alfonso Soriano, fan favorite, for Alex Rodriguez, who would switch over to third base to replace Aaron Boone, current Yankees manager, who had torn his ACL playing a game of pickup basketball. In 2004, the Yankees became the first team ever to lose the ALCS after going up three games to none. A huge embarrassment, which to this day, Yankees fans still have not lived down, especially if you have Red Sox fan friends who were around during that time. In 2005, after the Yankees began 11 and 19, Cashman smartly pulled the trigger on a few moves that helped the team. He called up Robinson Cano and Chen Ming Wong ahead of schedule, and they both had success in the bigs. He also acquired some journeymen like Sean Chacon from the Rockies and Aaron Small, who went 10-0. They were very good for the Yankees and helped save their season. 
But despite the team's success, they lost in the American League Division Series once again. According to several reports, Brian Cashman almost left the Yankees in 2005 for the Washington Nationals. He was having some issues with George Steinbrenner at the time, and he was having some issues with the members of the organization that were based out of Tampa, what was known at the time as the Tampa faction, the people who surrounded George Steinbrenner. Ultimately, though, Cashman did re-sign with the Yankees. Cashman received more authority over player personnel decisions, and he got a nice contract that paid him over $1.3 million over the next three years. The Yankees failed to advance past the ALDS in 2005, 2006, or 2007. In 2008, despite the Yankees missing the playoffs for the first time since 1993, Cashman signed a three-year contract extension to stay with the Yankees through the 2011 season. That winter, Cashman signed CC Sabathia, AJ Burnett, and Mark Teixeira to long-term contracts and traded for Nick Swisher, who had a career year and became an instant fan favorite. The Yankees won the World Series, and all of these guys played huge roles. Cashman had finally done it, pulled the trigger on a big winter at the right time, and he had his own championship. The Yankees went on to make the playoffs again in 2010, but lost to the Texas Rangers and red-hot Josh Hamilton in the ALCS. And then following the 2010 season, Cashman had a hard line on negotiations with Derek Jeter. He reportedly told Derek Jeter to his face, a guy who missed being a unanimous Hall of Fame selection by one vote and was the Yankees' captain, he told him to his face that he would rather have Troy Tulowitzki as the Yankees' starting shortstop. It soured Jeter's relationship with the Yankees to this day. To this day. And that's a shame. Yankees ownership agreed to sign Rafael Soriano in January 2011 without Cashman's approval, and then in an awkward moment, Cashman stated at Soriano's introductory press conference that he disagreed with the deal. Soriano had a rough year in 2011, but actually was pretty solid in 2012, his final year with the Yankees before being moved. The Yankees re-signed Cashman to a three-year contract in 2011. The Yankees lost in the American League Championship Series to the Tigers in 2012, getting swept. And then in 2013, A-Rod composed a tweet saying that he had been cleared to play by his doctors after hip surgery. Cashman had issues with this because apparently doctors had not cleared Rodriguez to play. And this caused the relationship with A-Rod to begin to falter. Cashman also wanted to trade Robinson Cano during the 2013 season, saying that they would be unable to re-sign him the next offseason. Ownership actually prevented Cashman from exploring this trade, and Cano ultimately signed with Seattle. And Cashman was actually vindicated, because Cano's career had gone downhill quickly, and he's also had multiple performance enhancement drug suspensions. After the 2013 season, the Yankees signed Masahiro Tanaka, Jacoby Ellsbury, Brian McCann, and Carlos Beltran to contracts that totaled 438 million bucks. You could argue that Beltran was okay and that Tanaka was pretty solid, but Ellsbury and McCann were both terrible. McCann couldn't get past the shift, and Ellsbury couldn't stay on the field. On October 10, 2014, the Yankees signed Cashman to another three-year deal through the 2017 season. And that offseason, Cashman prioritized restructuring the Yankees roster with younger players. He replaced the retired Jeter with D.D. Gregorius, instantly became a fan favorite, great move. He also acquired Nathan Yovaldi, and he improved a lot during that season, ended up getting a nice contract from the Red Sox. During the 2016 season, he traded Carlos Beltran to the Texas Rangers, Andrew Miller to the Cleveland Indians, and Araldus Chapman to the World Series champion Chicago Cubs. In those trades, he got back Clint Frazier and Glaber Torres, two guys who are on the Major League roster today, both of whom have shown promise. Glaber Torres actually had 38 home runs, but both of whom are having bad seasons this year. In 2017, the Yankees made the postseason with Aaron Judge in right field, Gary Sanchez behind the plate. They defeated the Minnesota Twins in the wildcard game, and the Baby Bombers were exciting. 
They went on to defeat the Cleveland Indians in the division series, coming back from two games to none to beat Corey Kluber in Game 5. And you could argue that the 2017 team was the most exciting of the past maybe 20 years, possibly with the exception of the 2009 championship squad. They were young, they were homegrown, they were hungry, they were fun to watch. So the Yankees were in the ALCS for the first time since 2012, but they lost to the Astros in seven games. Turned out later the Astros were cheating, so the Yankees probably got robbed of a World Series appearance. Cashman, though, was named the 2017 Executive of the Year, according to Baseball America. During the offseason, he recommended to Hal Steinbrenner that the Yankees replace manager Joe Girardi, who was kind of a polarizing figure. A lot of fans loved him. A lot of fans didn't. Some of the players loved him. Some didn't. He wasn't a guy that would go around the clubhouse and get to know you. He was your manager, and he took that role very seriously. He didn't try and be buddies. He left that up to the coaches. But he replaced him with Aaron Boone, who was more of a millennial-friendly type of manager. I would argue that it has not worked out. It has not been a good decision. On December 9th, the Yankees traded second baseman Starlin Castro and two prospects for Marlins outfielder and reigning MVP, John Carlos Stanton. People went nuts over this move at the time. But there was a not insignificant portion of the fan base that was concerned that we might be taking on another gigantic contract. Those fans have been vindicated. I'll go ahead and admit, I wanted that deal to get done. I was excited about it. So I was on the wrong end of this. On December 11, 2017, the Yankees signed Cashman to a five-year, $25 million contract to keep him as the Yankees general manager through 2022. If Cashman completes his new deal, he will become the longest tenured general manager in Yankees history. The 2018 season saw Cashman and the Yankees win 100 games and defeat the A's in the wildcard game, but the Red Sox knocked them down in the division series and went on to win the World Series. Cashman did make several savvy moves between 2018 and 2020. He acquired Luke Voigt, who became a home run champion for what was practically spare parts at the time. He acquired Gio Urshela for just cash, and Gio has become a stud and a fan favorite. He signed DJ LeMahieu to a two-year contract to become the Yankees' version of Ben Zobrist, and he vastly overperformed in his first two years before falling back to earth this season. In 2019, the Yankees won 103 games despite having over 30 players on the injured list during the season. You could argue that Brian Cashman built the depth that was able to step in and carry that team, but once again, the core fell to the Astros in the playoffs. The 2020 season doesn't really count in my book. COVID ravaged the league. Guys took the season off. It just changed the entire way that the league was structured. You had no fans. You had those stupid double headers with seven innings each and the runner on second and extra innings. It was just a weird season. And part of that's carried over to 2021. And so far in 2021, the Yankees are massively underperforming. Injuries have not been as severe, but the Yankees lack dynamic baseball players outside of Aaron Judge. They lead the league in hitting into double plays and they rank 23rd in runs per game. Even more concerning is the farm system lacks high level talent that could provide some spark. There seems to be no help in sight, with the team insisting that things are bound to improve. However, the facts are clear. Since 2001, Brian Cashman has just one title, and it was the year he spent all of George's money, 2009. George went out a champion, but will Cashman ever be a champion again? Is he a good general manager? That's for you to decide. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. If you really enjoyed it, check out the swag section. We've got tons of great designs to support all your favorite Yankees. And if you simply cannot get enough Yankees content, check out the podcast version of this channel, The Freeze by NYY Recaps, available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Derek. Thanks for watching.